Hey everybody, it's Peter, and today we've got a special one for you. We are comparing three Volkswagen Tiguans, all of them virtually new, and we're gonna go through them in depth to help you decide which one's best for you, and here's the best part. If I didn't answer the questions that you want answered, just let me know in the comments below, and we'll come back to these vehicles to make sure we make more videos and answer your questions, whether in the comment section or with extra videos. And how do we do that? Well, this is the best part. Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals here in Fredericton, New Brunswick allows me to have access to their entire inventory. These are only three of the Tiguans we have in stock right now. And if you're looking at a small crossover, this is an amazing place to go because not only can you compare the Volkswagens if that's what you're interested in, but you can use the same sales team who are amazing. This is Canada's huggable car dealer, but the same sales team can help you compare to all of their competitors right here on the lot. Even if you're looking for a new vehicle, these are slightly, slightly used, but as you can see, they're virtually brand new. So in this video, full review, let's get going. So behind me are three 2022 Tiguans. There's the R line in the center and it is flanked by two different comfort lines. One is a seven passenger, one is a five passenger. We're gonna start by showing you what the key looks like because it's identical on all three. And then we're gonna show you some of the exterior things that you may wanna keep in mind before we move to the interior. So let's start with that key right now. All three vehicles have an identical key and they're kind of nice. They're just, uh, Small in your pocket, you've got lock and unlock, of course. You've got powered tr operated trunks on all of these, and you've got a remote start as well, the little panic button on the side. And again, nice compact key that fits in your pocket nice and easily. Let's take a look at the outside of these vehicles. So we're gonna start with this comfort line here. You're gonna notice an R here. There are two different variations of this R line or R type trim. This is the lower version compared to that. And more confusing is, although this is a comfort line, so is the gray one. It's just not that R spec or R line uh, comfort line as well. So a couple confusing things there, but just so you know, this is the higher comfort line, the midline version of the one we're gonna take a look at today. And you can see out front here, you have LED headlights, but they will be different in the other vehicles. So we're gonna show you that up front here. They are nice white lights through there. So that is the nice bright white light that you like to see in a uh, in a modern vehicle, but they are different than you'll see in another in, a, in the other vehicle. So you've got parking sensors down there out front. You're gonna notice a difference as we move over to the top line trim over here, which still has the parking sensors here. A little different look to the grill as well. Uh, just slightly different, a little bit extra sort of chrome outlines there. But here is that headlight difference. You've got a different sort of daytime running light type look, and you've got what's called projector beam headlights. They are LED as well. So what is the benefit of going to projector beam over just the regular uh, LED? Generally speaking, these are a little more precise, a little more sharp cut off, a little more, um, like I said, a little more precision there. They are better but both are very, very good. And if you're coming from an older vehicle that does not have LED lights, both of these vehicles are going to give you a much upgraded look. Coming over here, you see that the, the look sort of tones down a little bit. You don't have that sort of black, uh, piano black accent around here. You have more of a metallic or sorry, uh, plasticky type black. You still have the parking sensors in the front. You still have the LED lights there and uh, you know, a whole lot of sort of the same. One thing I didn't point out is you're gonna notice a camera in the bumper out front here. And that camera allows this vehicle to have that 360 style camera. So that bird's eye view style camera in this. All three have extra large sunroofs in these. Let's go to the trunk as well, because we're gonna show you a couple differences here. This one in particular is uh, something I wanna show you. Well, it's just, it's easier to show you on this vehicle. So let me just uh, show you the Tiguan. Oh boy, where's there? Right in the center, again, power trunk there. So this is what the traditional trunk would look like in all of these vehicles. This one here has the underfloor storage, but really it's a full diameter spare. So it is a sort of space saving spare, but it allows the full diameter of the wheel, which is nice to have. One thing I really like back here is you have the 40, 20, 40 split. That makes a difference because you could throw hockey sticks down here. The other thing I like is because this is removable and stowable under the floor, you could fold just the center seat down and maybe have a dog back here and allow that dog to look through. And if you do have a dog, hey, check out this one here. You can get a little accessory here again, power trunk again. There's a little muddy buddy that works great with your uh, dog there as well. So again, even on the higher end trim, basically the same trunk here, 40-20-40 uh, split. But here is the difference that you're gonna see when you move up to the um, seven passenger model. You have a little bit of a bump here. And again, they're storing that uh, cargo cover underneath this bump. You can sort of see it in there. And then 
you have two little jump seats. Now let's be fair, these are not full-time seats for adults, but if you had to take someone, you could. Those seats can move a little bit forward. You still have the 40-20-40 split there. These of course fold flat into the floor and you have the option in a Tiguan, which is a smaller crossover, to take seven people in a pinch, to take a couple extra kids, to throw people back there. It just gives you the option on short trips to take a couple extra people. I think that's super handy. The other thing we're gonna point out back here, this one has black trim around an artificial exhaust. This one has, and I say artificial because there's just nothing there. Like it is a black panel. This one, same sort of idea here. Oops, come on camera, there we go. Black trim there, but you have the silver and, uh, or sorry, the chrome type look. And this one over here is a simple black plastic. So little difference as well. The reflectors don't run straight across. They do on these two models right there. Let's start talking powertrain on these vehicles. And when we do that, we'll also mention towing ability. Obviously the powertrain in any vehicle is important. All of these share a powertrain. Now there's a couple things that are important. It's 184 horsepower, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it has 221 foot pounds of torque, which is pretty good. And the bigger thing is that torque is available from 1600 RPM. So that is a low rev range to have maximum power. Torque is the power you feel. It's what gives you that grunt to pull. And that means that these, um, you know, smaller crossovers can tow about 1500 pounds, which means if you want something like a jet ski or something like that, you can tow that behind this without a whole lot of difficulty. Now let's dive in the vehicle and see what we've got in there. Jumping in, we're gonna go in the top spec version and you've got some nice things here like the Fender audio system. Those are the tweeters in the doors there. You've got some nice stitching down here. Wood look trim, of course, almost no wood is real wood these days. It's all plastic, but it looks quite nice. And down here you have the typical power seats and also the memory seats. Now, one thing about Volkswagens is they feel different to drive and to sit in than any other vehicle on the road. They're different than Japanese cars. They're different than American cars. There's a feeling to the seats that is consistent among Volkswagen Golfs and Jettas and you know vehicles for years. They manage this consistent feel and it's really comfortable in this vehicle. This one has a screen out front, a screen in the center. We're gonna show you what those are all about right now. All right, when you jump in, you get a welcome screen here. It disappeared because I've been sitting in the car just to get set up here. Now I start the car, everything starts up and you've got, let me just turn the radio down which is an excellent stereo system, by the way. You've got a nice system. So steering wheel heating is automatically coming on. That's the way this car has been set up. You can do that. Again, it looks like the typical gauges that you would see in you know, the older Volkswagens that had traditional gauges, very similar font, very similar style, very German feel. But you'll notice it says starting navigation, and this is what they do really, really well. No position data, there we go. So you really have a really good mapping system here instead of having to use it over here, which allows you to use this full screen for radio, entertainment, all kinds of other things. Of course, you can move things around where you want them, but Volkswagen is one of the best for giving you that full information in there. You're seeing a little bit of flicker. That's just the shutter speed between my camera and these screens. They don't flicker in real life. They are crystal clear, very good precision in here. So down here, again, safety features, all sort of touch capacitive type uh, buttons on here. So you can have your cruise control. It's a smart cruise control. All the safety features are in these vehicles. Uh, um, that you would have in any other vehicle that you would expect. So, you know, you're not upgrading or downgrading. If you're spending this money on uh, just about anything in the small crossover segment, you're getting a lot of the same safety features. Now, how they work is different, and that includes something like the transmission. Volkswagen has always had this, or for a long time now, has had this um, automatic transmission that has a manual shift function that is an instant shift. So very good automatic transmission down here. Again, more touch capacitive type controls down here. You have ventilated seats, which you can turn on there. You have rump roasters there. Now, this is interesting. I can have the heated seat and the ventilator on at the same time. That's interesting, I didn't know you could do that. I thought it would turn one off and the other on. So I'll have to look into that a little bit more. You can see this is dual zone climate control. Uh, one thing I will point out, you are seeing a ton of reflection here. I don't see that same reflection. When you're filming with a single eye camera, and you're looking with two eyes, your two eyes kind of blur the background much better than the camera can. So although this is a piano black type feel down there, I have no issues seeing that with my own eyes. It's quite simple to use. Um, again, all touch capacitive type stuff. Um, auto system, you can sync the, the two sides together if you want to, but I currently have the driver's side just a degree warmer. And then coming up here, again, full infotainment system. 
you know, all the same stuff as you would have in every other car, a little different interface. Pretty easy to use interface here, nothing too crazy. Um, the stereo system works very well, AM, FM, and everything else. Let's throw the car in reverse for just one second. You have the option of doing just the backup camera, which is sort of the default, or you can check into that 360 camera, which is again, um, that benefit you have of that 360 camera. Now you still have your yellow lines here if there's anything coming there, and then you have extra lines here. If you turn the wheel, you can see that the green and red stay fine. It is warning me that the other vehicles are quite close to me. That's why you hear, you may hear some beeping, you may not, but that's why also that yellow is uh, there as well. And you'll see when, as I turn the wheel, that's when it starts beeping to warn me that this little orange area is, is a danger area for me. Going straight, it'll, if I can go straight enough, Anyways, if I go straight enough, it will stop. I am just very close to those vehicles. So yeah, there we go. It just stopped right now. So uh, you can see it only warns you if something's in your path. Otherwise, it's going to let you do your thing. And I think that works very well. Coming down here, typical stuff. You've got drive modes. You've got um, electronic parking brake. You've got uh, simple modes. Let's see what they say in the dash here. Snow mode is that one, of course. This one is called normal. This one is called off-road. Yeah, you're not going too far off-road with this one. And this one's off-road custom, so you can change those settings around and play with that as well. So we're just gonna keep that in normal. Cup holders down here. Let's flip the camera around and show you what it looks like uh, from my perspective. All right, I guess it's not really my perspective, but all three of these vehicles have the panoramic sunroof, which is really nice. They've got a nice thin bar in the center, so it's all glass, it's excellent. Overall headroom, of course, I can move my seat up or down. You've got good space here. We're gonna jump in the back seat of it. Oh, sorry, we're gonna, yeah, the back seat of this one, but not the third row seat. I'm not doing that for video. You're gonna have to do that on your own. Uh, but yeah, you can move this seat forward, back, up, down. So I'm gonna leave it where it's comfortable for me right now. Um, again, the seating positions here, excellent in this car. You can raise and lower it. It's a very supportive seat. A little firmer feel, a little German type feel. So if you're familiar with Volkswagens, that's what you're getting here. Um, very good feel. And again, it's really identical through all three vehicles, uh, the feeling. So now let's check out the back seat. All right, similar camera view, but you're gonna see that there is a ton of space back here. So the Tiguan has been lengthened for this generation. That gives you extra space back here. It allows you to have a third row in some vehicles if you want. And overall headroom is excellent. Of course, the seats can be tilted and moved. One thing that I find interesting is sometimes when they have a third row, they only make the middle row move forward if there's a third row to give you more legroom back there. What I like is when you look at me right now, I have no need for this like foot of space between me and a six foot driver where I was just sitting in that seat in that position. So I can move this seat, try to do it smoothly, all the way forward, all the way forward here. So I've just moved the seat, I don't know if you can see, but a significant way, probably eight inches or more forward. And uh, you can see my knees still have typical, this is typical small crossover space, maybe, you know, compact crossover at that point, but I still have all the space I need. I've created extra luggage space, which is really nice. So you can really kind of make this work. It's kind of a vehicle that competes above its class, even though it's still a smaller crossover, it competes well above its class. So I'm gonna move back a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna go all the way back there. there. And uh, now I'm gonna show you just a couple controls here and we'll move through. All right, the vehicle is off, but you do have the vents back here, which you can control how much fan speed is coming through, which is nice and easy. You do have the heated seats back here. It's touch capacitive as well, so no buttons, and a USB-C port along with a 12 volt port that is quite sticky actually to get that open. So you've got that. And one thing I do like is they do things right here. You've got a pocket in the back of this seat here and in the passenger seat. A lot of time in modern vehicles, they forget to put on the driver's side. And uh, let's be honest, we're not putting MacBooks, but map books back here anymore. We're putting uh, the kids stuff and all that kind of stuff. So just good to have that symmetry there. Bottle holders in the door, as well as in the armrest here, which of course that armrest can pop up and uh, that center piece of the seat can fold down. The third, the remember the 40-20-40 uh, split. All right, let's go take a look outside. I want to point out a couple differences here. The Comfort Line has the black style roof racks. They are the same style in each vehicle, but of course you do have the uh, more chromed look or metallic type look uh, on the vehicle that we were just sitting in. You also have three different wheels available on these three vehicles. So these are 18 inch, sort of a gunmetal gray, dark gray. These ones here are 20 inch, so skipping an inch there. Uh, and of course you've got that uh, black and silver detail there. So there's uh, quite a bit of uh, black in there as well. And then as you move over here, you've got the in-betweeners, the 20, or sorry, the 19 inches, and they are, of course, blacked out as well. They look pretty sharp in person. I gotta admit, black wheels do not film well 
at all, but they look pretty sharp in person. So some subtle differences, again, that uh, when you get that R line or that R spec, whether it's a comfort line or the top end version, you do get the black accents there on the door. Little, they show up a little bit better on the blue paint over here. So you do have, um, you know, some similar styling details there when you spec it out like that. But there is, there are differences for sure. It doesn't look identical uh, in the different trim lines there. So which one of these vehicles is best for you? Maybe you want to see more of the two comfort line packages, the interior of those. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a full review of those. And if you are looking for a small crossover, we've got all kinds from all kinds of brands. So that makes my job easy to try to help you with your shopping. If you have a vehicle that you want to see on video, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get that on video. And of course, if you're shopping for one of these vehicles, why go just to the Volkswagen dealer when you can see the three Volkswagens here and there's another 2019 Tiguan over there and there's everything in its class pretty much sitting here on the lot. You can talk to the same salesperson. So when you compare numbers, you know you're getting apples to apples comparisons. If you're coming to Canada's Huggable Car Dealer, they are absolutely laser focused on treating their customers well. And I can tell you that comes from treating their employees well. They treat me here. I'm not even an employee and they treat me like I'm family and it's just an awesome place to be. So I wanna thank Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals for allowing me access to their vehicles. And if you have an interest in some of these vehicles, subscribe to our channel, let me know what you wanna see, and we'll continue to grow our channel to try to make sure we get the answers that you're looking for. Thanks everybody for watching.